No, let me actually recap what I just heard. It's a very obvious. Donald Trump is not acknowledging the defeat he just actually has to eventually come to terms with. It's really interesting, according to Ryan Lisa, there is not likely to have any type of concession until he would truly exhaust all the legal venues available. That means there is not likely to witness an invitation from the current occupant president. Because this is really a traditional ceremony, totally unlike you know, George H.W. Bush, who was a graceful enough to invite the president-elect to the White House, despite his status as an outgoing lame duck. That was a stark difference made by the sitting president at the time. Donald Trump is, you know, expected to... Um, Look for his opportunities by waging a political rally. But it wouldn't be very unlikely that his appeal to recount would somehow bear any consequential results because he should convince so many different states, the Secretary of State, and they are not likely to be in favor of a his petition because he could not find any substantial evidence. And, uh, and uh, one political reporter says, the team Trump is more likely to piggyback on the creative reports done by those political analysts or even reporters or journalists in order to play this blame game. He just really wants to lay down a blame at the door of reporters and the mainstream media to emphasize the ridiculous inequality and injustice they experienced. Although, so far, no substantial or meaningful evidence was put down. They claimed that these ballots were counted even after the due date. Because of the actual arrival, it doesn't matter, regardless of the arrival date, the actual postmark the dates were likely to be past the deadline and that means there had been a certain invol invalidity issue some of the ballots are not at all qualified to be counted and ta uh, tabulated but they were still part of the system and there should be another inquiry into these type of voting fra fraud but this type of term is a very political because Donald Trump indeed carried a significant popular vote, even though, as a presidential historian, Douglas Brinkley said that he was literally defeated to humility in terms of the Electoral College numbers, right? He and Joe Biden literally swept the floor by carrying a humongous numbers of electoral college. That's what happened. But he could not accept it. But you know, in a hypothetical scenario, if President George, I mean President Donald Trump had carried state like Pennsylvania or Georgia, and there had been indeed a certain speculation siding with that scenario. Under that circumstance, it could have been possible that he might he might be toying with the notion that he could have made any difference. But that's a very unlikely, especially he actually lost from hotly contested battlegrounds like Pennsylvania. And he is very, very likely to lose from Georgia. He's not going to carry the state of Georgia. And that type of indications truly suggest that there was no change in any available legal venues. Or there would have been no legal bearing. Which could have an impact on the final results. Here the legal bearing means any importance and significance. There would be almost no change if any to have any impact on the final results or you know any type of a political shenanigan pulled off by Donald Trump and he's confident like Rudy Giuliani could possibly create any influence on this 
already decided election. This would be very disruptive, but contrary to his、uh, harmful and pernicious efforts to ruin the sanctity of democracy against the presidential history. Uh, Joe Biden's team is very preoccupied with、uh, honing in on the message.、Um, it is expected to have a task force teams announcing the selected members devoted to COVID nineteen management. Already, three people were identified, but the official recognition is going to come out tomorrow. This is really from the sources collected from CNN reports, so I cannot actually, you know, claim any type of、uh, credit because this is not my knowledge, and I just heard it as a hearsay evidence. So I can never actually say I actually can guarantee the validity of a message per se, and.、Uh, And the dozens of scientists were actually part of the team. That's what has been said, and it's significant to witness the nationwide guidelines could possibly be underway because so many different states are right now being confused. Because several days ago, in Washington State, the governor Jay Jay Inlay said. This is really like the kinetic you alone, you know, on the battleground fight against the enemy, all alone with no guideline following from the federal government. There is no representative folks giving you the proper dictation or commands. So you know, each state would act alone, and this would create more confusion, and more people are discombobulated, and that I mean definitely. The headless and the disorderly management worsens and exacerbates the conditions deeply. That's really the reason why so many people are painting to witness the laydown of the nationwide handling from the federal government. So many doctors and scientists and the pathology and infectious diseases are so graciously thankful. To witness this type of、uh, coalesced movement suggested by the task force in favor of science over fiction—that's a really the amazing difference. But allegedly, this sitting president, who is outgoing, is still crunching numbers and seeking in a possible strategies. To deny and disrupt the democratic choice made by people of the United States, he has been willing to say, "No, I'm going to find a possible venue that might subvert the results." But it's a very difficult. There had been a voter fraud indication yesterday. His proxy Rudy Giuliani clearly suggested that, especially the swing state like Pennsylvania. Was under the influence of、uh, manipulation, because many of、uh, election commissioners and、uh, official directors, they are actually locking up the door away from the observants and inspectors in general, who should have been part of accounting. So many of account counting were、uh, conducted in a dubious circumstances. Where no sufficient transparency was guaranteed, so in the midst of the suspicions, they were indeed, allegedly, from their perspective, indeed, quote unquote, indeed, certain votes added, simply to stop the ballot box, or to rig the game in favor of Joe Biden, on behalf of Joe Biden. That's what has been suggested. They believe that at least you know a one third of a ballot, which did not seem before the deadline and the due date clarified by the state law, 
somehow were integrated into the ballot box. These votes should have been discounted, but they were all mixed together to jack up the popularity of Joe Biden. That was their argument. And the President Donald Trump is right now scrambling up his legal team. And uh, he's been also tinkering with the possible political events to gather up supporters and frustration to disseminate this you know, fraudulent gimmicks and controversies. And as many of our established and officials in and outside politics were very frustrated to witness this type of uh, unprecedented rebellious movement by Donald Trump. Because it's really the first time in, in the presidential history, nearly. And uh, you know, the game show host you know, Alex Three back is that he, you know, this morning he gave up his ghost. He could not actually go on. Eventually, he gave into the long-lasting battle against the pancreatic cancer. He had a complications coming from it. It was so far he was doing really okay after uh, the chemotherapy, but he could not actually stay longer. He was in a staple. For many of American households, that means he's been part of American tradition or American family for so many years. So some people really even actually believe that Halle Satrevi is that they're a family. I mean, part of family. I mean, conceptually, not literally, obviously. Because every single time near the dinner time, Halle Satrevi is on TV. And this you know, ma master of ceremonies, this game show host... This is so part of uh, home entertainment for se for several decades. So people greatly misses them already. And, um, and many of the famous and the contestants like Ken Jennings. They actually came out to pay tribute to Alex Trebek saying that he literally misses and uh, he's been thankful for every minute he gets to, he, he already got to spend. He's get to Spain. Yeah. I'm not lying. He said that, you know what, he's been very grateful for every single moment he had spent with Alex Trebek. I mean, that's what has been said. Have I, have I actually mispronounced it? He's got to Spain. Uh, it was somewhat, I mean, I just really need to clarify my pronunciation in case I actually mispronounce it. And, uh, what's that? Uh... Oh, he's a really kind of lovely person. Uh, from the commemorative tweet left by Kane Jennings, who literally won the game more than, more than several dozens of times, right? That's really amazing. He already actually renewed the records. I'm not really so sure his record was broken by the James... James Holzhauer? James Holzhauer actually broke his record? I don't know. But anyway, that's a very fascinating. And the what? And the many people were devastated to hear this type of a political dispute. Because Donald Trump is literally sowing the seeds of civil unrest indicating that there could be possible violence to follow, and that way he could actually at least minimize this shameful sugaring because he's been a really kind of powerful person. But Valerie Jarrett, um, former Obama advisor and high-ranking member, an officer at the White House, says that, just like you know, what Mitt Romney did in 2012, he should acknowledge his loss because Mitt Romney made a hard decision to place a phone call to President Obama. So he could actually recognize, he could recognize his loss. 
and the president of the United States could be recognized as the winner of his re-election. That type of uh, gracious work was done by Mitt Romney. I mean, I don't really understand that why anything here would be so difficult for me to understand. It's very obvious. So the exact word is, you know, Donald Trump, the occupant president, is railing against the election result, saying no. There had been a no and the result contradicting his claim that he won the election by a lot. So he's been still sticking to the claim that the election was stolen from him. And there were certain folks plotting against him from various states. So there should be an independent inquiry into the corruptive behaviors allegedly conducted by the election officials from various states. That's what has been argued at this moment. I have no difficulty of understanding. But by the way, in terms of Romney, uh, immediately following from the election, on election night, he somehow suggested that the President Donald Trump uh, possibly should look into legal options available on the table. But right now, it has a more and more results. Definitely indicate a clear victory for Joe Biden with the legitimacy, indisputable. Then Mitt Romney yesterday came out to have a conversation with Jake Tepper. He admits that any type of uh, unfounded voter fraud suggestions could be very detrimental to the health of democracy. It could have truly destroy or destroy the very fundamentals of our system. So president whose work can carry significant influence should be mindful of the ramifications and reverberating consequences from his words. Because this utterly baseless or very dubious non-substantiated and voter fraud argument could it take a toll on our democracy it could actually instigate a round of violence because if there are indeed a certain people who cast their ballots for President Donald Trump. They might be instigated. There could be possi- po- there there could be possibilities. So people should watch out. But it's a very unlikely to expect in the beautiful picture the outgoing president. And that an outgoing president invites the president-elect to have a peaceful power transition and transfer, whatever you name it. Because that's really difficult and that's a toxic environment. And president, the sitting president, the incumbent president, the occupant of the White House is claiming a bogus argument that does not uphold the truth shared by many. Even as said from the very beginning, he was advocating the alternate truth. That more people actually attended his inauguration ceremony than President Obama. But maybe even until his final days in the White House, he still clings to the very unverified and controversial fact not even fact this is a really thesis right and that's just something to be consistent when it comes to donald trump maybe people like to think that this is a donald trump thing that's how donald trump behaves no one has a different anticipation for how he reacts to the circumstances because there are many predictions and many people like to say that in in case of his defeat he would actually act exactly the way we are witnessing right now. So we are actually witnessing this. We are actually seeing this unfolding event in real time. That's a very interesting suggestion. But the problem is there are significant 
not really negligible amount of people who still share their passion for Donald Trump. But if Preston takes this, you know, this content to the next level, if he brings this frustration to the fully developed outbursts of anger, then it would be disastrous. So far, America's democracy, ex I mean, demonstrates its maturity. So it does not actually, you know, bring out any type of significant destructive efforts. No one is actually vandalizing the buildings. No one is burning flags. There are no serious riots upsetting and unsettling the nation. It's a very welcoming news, but president's behavior and comportment is very, very alarming at this moment because no one can actually guarantee what he's the followers could do if they were agitated by presence, very toxic and politically influential rhetoric per se, because he's not to be a demagogue. He's really great at imbuing people with uh, unfounded ideas. And he was actually at the vanguard of the Infowars, and using various and venues to spread completely baseless, non-scientific hawks. So this could actually be possible again. But so far, no noticeable damage has been done to the American democracy.